Hi friends, welcome to episode number 4 of our Master Planning Level 1 series. In this episode, we will continue to explore about the coverage group capabilities. Especially, we will talk about the pegging sequence functionality in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation. This is one of the key concepts which is used in order to peg the demand with the supply. We will try to understand the various combination of scenarios which is possible using this particular functionality. With that note, let's quickly jump into today's topic. So let's quickly get into today's topic of uh, covering the remaining areas within coverage group and we will try to understand one of the important concepts in coverage group in today's episode. So watch this video until end. Also make sure that you watch episode number 3 before getting into episode number 4. So as we are following this uh, agenda, uh, so today we will be covering in detail about the, the pending areas to be focused on coverage group. Then in the next episode we will take, talk about the time fences. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel d 3 Sway Talks and uh, follow and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I post uh, videos related to the same. So coming back to our topic of uh, the next important concept regarding master planning especially with respect to coverage group is the pegging sequence. Configuring the pegging sequence is very important because you are telling the system how to handle the um, existing supplies in terms of whenever you are pegging it with uh, pegging a particular demand with a supply right. So pegging actually defines against each and every requirement what is the logic on which you want to align the supply or peg the supply right so the master planning uses pegging sequence to determine which supply will cover which demand so if you, if you have a demand for an item and you have a supply for the item and uh, how you want to peg the supply to respective demands right what is the logic and you define the sequence of it in the pegging sequence so you need to completely understand what is the sequence which is taken by the system based on the various options which are available in Dynamics 365 in order to configure this. This setting only has an effect when consume on and inventory is set to after all other supply. So this is a the, when you are configuring the pegging sequence there is option called consume on and inventory and there are two options which you can provide over there whether you want to consume after all other supply or before all other supply. We will quickly understand what it actually means whether you want the inventory to consumed immediately whichever, whichever you have in stock or if you want the inventory to be consumed only after checking the upcoming supplies from the vendors or the upcoming supplies from the production order after which you want to consider the existing on-line inventory. So but that is a separate logic to it which we will quickly see as part of this video. It's let you choose whether or not to pick demand to on and before pegging to supply that can't meet the requested demand date right. So if you want to consume the on and then you need to configure before all other supply but if you want to check the existing supplies that is expected to be received before the demand dates itself then only you will be able to meet the demand right if you are having a, a demand to be supp to supply a material on jan 30th so if you are if your vendor is supplying the material to you on jan 29th then you will be able to meet the demand or your production you are a manufacturing you are in a manufacturing environment that your production will be completed by jan 20 jan 29th then you will be able to meet the demand for a specific item right so that is something which you should be absolutely sure when you are configuring the system so system will try to check based on whether you will be able to meet the demand or not from the upcoming supplies or you want to consume directly the inventory available in your stock the system will always pick demand to supply that meets the demand date before it picks to supply that can't meet it right so this is where the concept of negative days also comes into picture where we actually in the previous episode we discussed about the negative days if not please check out the same and come back to this episode because if there are supplies which the system is unable to meet then it tries to take the next appropriate sequence in order to meet the demand that's how the master planning engine works so you can set the picking sequence at the master plan item coverage and coverage group level so like i said in the earlier video also like how the logic the sequence in which it can be configured and what is the sequence the system is going to take primarily master planning is the master plan is the place first it is going to check the picking sequence if the picking sequence is not configured there then it is going to check at the item level in the release products at the item coverage uh, override section and even if it is not that then it, then at last only it is going to check the configuration which is applicable in the coverage group. We will quickly see all these three. First of all in order to configure the pegging sequence let me go to the Dynamics 365 screen. So 
in the Dynamics 365 screen, if you go to uh, Master Planning and then Setup Coverage Group. So in each and every coverage group, you will be able to configure uh, whether you want to go for, um, let me show you. Yeah, so here, this is where the beginning sequences we already covered about coverage code, coverage time frames, negative days, positive days. And uh, so now we are in the concept of pegging sequence. So this pegging sequence can take only two options. Like I said, before all other supply or uh, the another one is after all other supply. But uh, this use latest possible supply is only applicable only if you choose after all other supply or else even whether if you enable or disable it doesn't make sense if you have selected before all other supply. So before all other supply, which means then you are directly consuming the on-hand inventory and whether you have enabled or, or disabled the toggle, it doesn't make sense for the system. So you need to configure after, after all other supply in order to enable the uh, use the functionality of use latest possible supply, right? So, so based on the combination, let's say, so what happens is uh, we'll get into that detail. Uh, so first configuration, you can do it at the coverage group level. And uh, next thing, next configuration, if not, then you can also do this at the item level. Uh, if, I, if you go into uh, product information management, release products and uh, um, because always system is going to check first at the master plan, next at the item level, and then only at the uh, coverage group level. So now let's say this is the item. And uh, if I go to uh, plan, uh, if I go to plan. So here you have the coverage item coverage. So whatever the configuration which is set over here, that is going to take the precedence over whatever we have configured in the coverage group. If you go to general section, and then um, so here if you see uh, override pegging sequence, right? So this is the pegging sequence currently available after all other supply use the latest possible supply. So let me change it to before all other supply and let me disable this. So if I'm going to run the master planning for this particular item, master planning is going to take this particular configuration instead of what is the configuration we have given in the coverage group. So this is the second setup. So what is the third way of doing it is in the master plan itself. If you go to the master planning setup, master plans. So in the master plans, we will be able to configure, uh, override the, uh, let me show you how to do that. Uh, I think it should be done. Let me expand this page and I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it can be done at the general section itself. So if you want to override the pegging sequence, just enable override pegging sequence, then you have the two options over here, uh, whether you want to consume it before all other supplies and uh, you have the option to use latest possible supply or not. But if you disable this, then this primarily does not override, uh, even though you run this master plan, the master plan will not override the configuration which you have done at the coverage group. But if you have configured the pegging sequence in the item, and if we have disabled this override pegging sequence, then at the item level first, the master plan is going to take the uh, the logic of to consume on an inventory. And then if it is not configured in the item, then it is going to take it from the coverage group. I hope that is clear. So let's go back to the slide. So that's where for, you, you can configure it in the master plan level, or you can configure it at the item coverage group level sorry, item coverage level in the release products, or you can do it for a coverage group itself. So that group can be assigned to multiple items, right? So this is how you need to configure the pegging sequence. But having said that the combination of ans the, the combination of configurations, which are possible, let's say, um, so let me go to coverage group once again. So there are four possible combinations, right? So I can keep the configuration as uh, after supply, use the latest possible supply, and then before all other supply, and then I can use, I can disable this toggle, or you can, I can use before all other supply and I can enable this toggle. So there are four possible outcomes for this configuration. So what are the expected result for these four? Let us quickly check that. Uh, let me go back to the slide. So the pegging sequence, like I said, you can keep the configuration as consume on and inventory before supply, Use letter supply can be yes or use letter supply can be no. But uh, in both the cases, if you consume the online inventory before all other supply, let's say you have a demand on Jan 30th, but uh, you want to fulfill the demand first looking at your online stock instead of looking at any upcoming supplies. 
So in those cases, you need to configure it as before all supply. In those cases, first it goes to go and check the on and in order to fulfill the demand. Next, it going to check the existing supply that can meet the demand date. So let's say we have an existing supply which is coming at uh, uh, on Jan 29 that the system is going to check that to fulfill the demand. Next, even if there is no existing supply that can't meet the demand date, but still within the negative days, let's say the supply, if you have seen our previous episode, then you might be aware of what's positive days and negative days. Let's say a uh, uh, supply is coming on February 2nd, still the, we are fine with of using that supply to fulfill the demand on Jan 30th and the customer is willing to wait for two more days. Then that particular supply is going to take as the third priority to fulfill the demand. But even if after that, if we are unable to fulfill the demand, then the master planning engine is going to create a new planned order. It can be a planned production order or the planned purchase order. So, so you can see the same logic applies in this case also, whether the use later supply is set to no or yes. In both the cases, it is always first on hand. Second is the existing supply that can meet the demand date. Third is existing supply that can't meet the demand date. And fourth, at last, it is going to create a new supply, new, new uh, supply for that particular new planned order for that uh, demand. Right. So it's the system, the planning engine is not going to create directly a planned order, but based on these configurations, it is going to create a planned purchase order, the production order. So make sure that you are absolutely aware of what based on your business specific requirements, how do you configure these? And the next uh, two possible options is you 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 enable consume on hand inventory after all supply. So you don't want to consume the on hand inventory immediately uh, before checking the existing supplies. So if you uh, enable after all supply and uh, use latest supply as yes, then your existing sub existing supply that can meet the demand date. So let's say you have a, a material which is coming on Jan 29th. That is something which is used to go used to go and fulfill your demand rather than disturbing your stock on hand. And next, even after that, if you are unable to meet the demand, then your on hand will be taken. And after that, you will, the system is going to check whether is there any negative days supply which can be used to fulfill this demand or not. After that, only the system is going to create a new planned supply order. And uh, in case if you have disabled and uh, you have kept use of later supply as no, but after all supply, in those cases, your negative days is going to come up, right? So in existing supply that can't meet the demand date is considered then existing supply that can't meet the demand date but still within the negative days. So which is within the negative days when you want to use that which is coming on Feb 2nd and still you want to use it to meet the demand on Jan 30th and uh, at last also third alternative is going to go and check the on hand. So some of the uh, in some of the manufacturing organizations it is always important to maintain the on hand for some of the critical items in those cases they always look at the possible supply options to meet a specific demand so that the critical on hand inventory is always maintained. So this is the logic which is typically used. I will also share the link on uh, the same table which is available in the Microsoft doc page also. Let me quickly go through that. Um, so this, this is the Microsoft learn page. I will also share this learn page link. Feel free to go through the entire doc. I know this is a very detailed document uh, which is already available in Microsoft learn. Um, so if, but if you are someone who is completely fine with of watching the video and then learning it, then I'll recommend you to, to not do this. But otherwise, uh, this is exactly the same table which we have replicated in our presentation also. So otherwise, you don't need to read the complete page. Simply follow the steps mentioned in this uh, video, right? So let me go back to the presentation. So the next important concept which we need to know is, uh, of course, this is not related to um, the purchase orders because this is also one of the important configuration with respect to coverage group. If you want to use the specified BOM or formula version, then you need to enable yes. So typically when you rise the sales orders in the sales order lines, you have the option to configure to use a specific BOM which you want to explode and generate the demand. In those cases, you need to provide the BOM also in the sales order lines. And I'll quickly show you how to configure the BOM in the sales order lines. And uh, at the same time, if you do not want to use the active version, only in those cases, you typically configure a specified BOM. Otherwise, typically, whenever the, um, the master planning engine runs, it always takes the active BOM version against a specific sales order demand. Let me uh, get back to the system. So let's say uh, this configuration is, let me go to the coverage group. I'll show you the configuration first, and then I'll show you how to configure this in the sales order. Um, so 
if I go to, let's say we have a coverage group and uh, at last we have this option called use the specified BOM or formula version and use specified route uh, version. So in this case, if you enable this to yes, then whatever the BOM or formula version which you have actually given in the sales order line, that will be picked in order to explode and generate the demand for the, the child items which need to be available in order to fulfill a demand, right? Uh, do not confuse yourself with these concepts right now. I'm just telling this for the purpose of uh, covering the important concepts in coverage group. But we will discuss these in detail as we get into the planned production orders, but not in planned purchase orders. So, and at the same time, what happens is if you want to prioritize the existing supply over the requirement of the bomb, then this can be enabled only if one of the, these two are enabled, right? So if I have disabled the toggle, then I will not be able to enable. Right now I am clicking on this uh, this toggle, but this radio button is unable to, we are unable to enable this, but we have to make sure that one of these two options is always enabled, right? So if I have enabled uh, these two toggles, then I will be able to enable prioritize existing supply over required bomb or formula or route version. So what it exactly means is, so this setting only applies when you use the specified BOM or formula or use the specified route version or set to yes. So like I said, until unless the other two toggles, one of the other two toggles are set to yes, you will not be able to use this functionality. And uh, set the setting to yes to prioritize existing supply such as online inventory if available over demands for demand specified for the BOM versions or the route or the routes. So what exactly happens is, so if you want to uh, prioritize the existing supply and the on-hand inventory compared to uh, creating a new supply, right? So in those cases, you, you need to enable this toggle. Otherwise, if it is set to no, then what happens is always result to creating a new supply. So if you want for the whatever the bomb version you have mentioned in the sales order line, if you want to create a new supply for that always, then you need to kind of enable this or the, disable this, if you enable this, then it is going to check for the on and inventory. So, so let's say if I have just enabled both, then it, the system is always going to check what is the bomb and the route in the sales order line instead of always taking the active bomb version or the, or the route version. Already we discussed about the bomb and the route version in our production control series. If you want to get more details about it, please do check out our bomb and uh, production and route version videos before coming to this. And uh, that's a very detailed uh, series of videos regarding the uh, discrete manufacturing processes that will definitely help you, uh, trust me. And the next one is, uh, like I said, if I want to prioritize, make sure that you enable this or else simply disable that. But once you have enabled these two toggle, you need to make sure that at the sales order line level, you have always capturing the uh, bomb and the route versions. So BOM IDs, uh, for example, if I go to sales order, all sales orders, uh, let me open any of the sales order. I'm just randomly opening a sales order. Uh, so in the sales order lines, so under the line detail section for each and every item, you can configure the, if you go to product, uh, you can configure the sub BOM and the sub route applicable. Uh, so if you have actually configured this sub bomb, sub bomb and sub route, then system is always going to take, even though it is not the active bomb version or the active route version, system will still take this particular bomb and this particular route to explode and then take the appropriate demand from those child, for those child items. So if you want that logic to be applied, then you have to cover the, um, the coverage group accordingly. So all these are very complex configurations based on your business specific requirements. You need to configure that. Um, let me go back to master planning, coverage group. Uh, so, so that's about the basic configuration of how do you configure the pegging sequence, use latest possible supply, what are the four possible alternatives, and then use a specific bomb route version and then uh, prioritize existing supply over the others. Right. So with that, uh, we kind of coming to end of this episode, probably in the next episode, we will discuss in detail about the concept of time fence in coverage group and how this time fence is very important in terms of calculating the dates. That is something which we are going to see as part of our next episode. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel D365 Talks or follow my profile in LinkedIn to get notified whenever I post videos related to Dynamics 365 F and O. See you soon in the next topic.